as you can see today, I'll be talking about how you can take, uh, how you can use Google Analytics to take the most out of your website. Uh, so uh, if you have any questions, uh, I prepared a time slot at the end of the presentation. So you can add any questions and also the presentation is online. I put it a uh, short link on my profile on Twitter. So if anybody is interested in the presentation, you can find it even now if there is any Wi-Fi. <laughs> if not, you can check it out later if you want to download it and you can either use it as notes or something that will be of use to you. So uh, the planned talk was about 45 minutes. We'll have time for questions. So not the whole hour. And hopefully I set up the last part if you have any questions about your current setup. So before I begin, I'd like to tell you more about myself and ask what actually you are expecting out of this, this particular presentation. So uh, as, <laughs> as you said, uh, uh, I'm a manager at the GoDaddy, a marketing coordinator and program manager for the pro program. And I've been dealing with IT for 10 years. Seven of those were in digital marketing and analytics and the last couple of years in a program management. So um, I have a lot of experience both in advertising and analytics. Uh, and I'd like to ask you now, before we go any further, uh, what are you using Google Analytics for? What are you expecting out of this lesson today? Do you have more of a blogs or e-shops? How many of you have a website? Okay, most of you. And how many of you actually use Google Analytics? So again, most of you. Okay, nice. Um, can any of you or would any of you like to tell me what do you expect today to find out? What, what's that one thing that you would actually like to learn during this presentation? And you can ask in Slovakian and he'll try to translate, hopefully. Okay, then maybe this way. Are you looking for more for introductory way into Google Analytics or some advanced setup? Who is in for in introductory? Okay, couple people and for the advanced? Okay, much more. Okay, then, then you'll like the second part of the presentation and I'll rush to that part where we <laughs> talk about intro to Google Analytics. So let's dive in. Uh, so before I actually want to talk about Google Analytics, I want to start uh, by the main question, how you can get the most out of your website. So Google Analytics is just one of the tools. It's not the complete solution. It's not what's going to give you a better website. Uh, so how do you get the most out of your website? You ask the right questions. You need to ask the right questions in order to analyze and get the real answers. So what are the right questions? And actually, a colleague just had a presentation when he talked about what actually a couple of questions that need to be answered before you can have any sort of a meaningful campaign. So what are those questions? Uh, what do I want to accomplish? Am I a freelancer? Uh, do I have a content blog? Am I maintaining a website for somebody else? Are you a web shop? Are you a marketeer? So what is, who are you? And what do you want to accomplish by either Google Analytics, if you're working for somebody else, or your own website? And you do that by defining who you are and what you want to achieve. The more you pick a measurable goal, and that smart <laughs> methodology comes in, the better you define your goal, the much more it will be easier to use the Google Analytics or another tool to achieve your business objective. So another good question, next question is, what is the goal of your website? Is it to bring more users to browse your content? Do you sell over your website? Uh, do you have a membership plan? Are you software as a service? Uh, are you in e-commerce? Are you some sort of company and just need a front face? Do you need a portal? So based on that, you'll set up uh, goals for your traffics, for your conversions, or for your sales. And using Google Analytics, you can do a pretty good job of all of that. I'm going to deal in that later. Next really important question is who's your target audience? Where are they from? What are their location? What is the technology they're using? What's their age? Uh, are they male? Are they female? You know, most of these questions actually can be answered to Google Analytics. And I know for experience that in almost 90% of the cases, uh, the companies have one perception on who their target audience is, and the reality is completely different. So what they pictured as an ideal customer or ideal buyer or ideal reader, almost always a little out of sync so with what actual analytics shows. 
next question is to understand the users. So do I have the right content? Am I engaging my audience? And are they happy with what they found the website? They stay in, do they read, do they just leave? So am I f successfully tr uh, shown on my website what I intended? Do I engage with my users correctly? Next big question, uh, Google Analytics is probably not the best tool for this, but is my website working well? Is it user friendly? Uh, what's hit speed? Does it crash? How many years does it take? Uh, one of the actually important questions that's also connected to hosting, uh, usually hosting plans have a limit for traffic or for users per month, and you can actually track with Google Analytics how many visits you have or how many users do you have or how much traffic bandwidth you are spending, and then to actually help you to go to the bigger hosting plan before your website crashes. And finally, what's Google Analytics really good? is how are you measuring success? Once we have a strategy, once we know who we are, what we're trying to achieve, who's the target audience, and am I, did, am I created my everything that co content and products on my site and it's working well, then how am I measuring if I'm succeeding? Do I meet my objectives? Is my sale high enough? Am I achieving what I set to achieve? And Google Analytics is really, really good on that part. In order to have that, you need to have the right measurement plan and measurement plan comes out of what you ever set up as your KPIs, your business objectives, what you're trying to measure. Uh, this slide here is for one specific re reason. I'm going to talk how you can easily implement, in, integrate Google Analytics into your website and how you can configure it. Uh, but also this sentence right here, make sure that you're aware of limitations. Google Analytics is not all encompassing tool. It's a very useful tool for a free tool. It does a lot of stuff but you have to be aware of its limitations. So let's start by defining what it can do and what it is. So can anybody tell me or does anybody want to tell me what Google Analytics is? Anybody? <laughs> okay, our audience. <laughs> uh, it's a tracking solution. So you basically use it to track what your users are doing on your website and how does it work, and what can we track, we're going to answer in the next couple of slides. So basically, let's say you're a visitor, you come to the website, uh, the server on which your website is hosted sends a, has a little sm small part of a JavaScript that sends a tracking code and checks if you have a cookie on your website. If you already had a Google Analytics cookie, in case you didn't, you're served with one, if in case you are, then you, you're continue to be tracked under that special ID that you have in the, your cookie. And basically, through that, a lot of information is sent back. And on the website, it's tracked which user is actually doing what, visiting, browsing, clicking, and all the action that you can actually track with Google Analytics. All that information is sent on Google servers, and after that, it's compiled, and you can see it in your analytics reporting. So what can we track with Google Analytics? This is a pretty confusing, let's say, picture. And it's tended to be that way because internet is really not that structured and organized. But let's say in the center, that's your website. And users can actually access it and see it on their mobile device, on their tablets, on their laptops, on their computers. And you can see that through Google Analytics. You can else actually also understand who's your user. Are they male? Are they female? Where are they from? What are they interested? What are they doing on the, your website? And you can also c see where they came from. Are they, that, is that our blog? Is it our an email? Did you have a campaign over Google or Facebook? Did somebody recommend you on the other website through affiliate marketing or other banners? You can analyze all that. And as a final, we can actually analyze what they are doing on websites. What pages are they visiting? Are they purchasing? Are they reading something? Are they doing any sort of action that you will find beneficial? And this is one of those interesting slides that are connected to backup uh, that we were all requi required to put in our presentations. Uh, all these have a backup. And I'm going to show you in Google Analytics one of the few things that people m you most usually miss and don't think, and that is backup views. Uh, you need to have backup of your data because it can easily happen that you lose some through the filtering. So, uh, 
I'm going to go through integration and setup of Google Analytics in a couple of steps. Uh, easiest way to integrate Google Analytics for those beginners that are looking just for that beginning stuff is to use a plugin. Uh, one of the most used plugins in Funster Insight, Insights, and it's pretty good. It's really simple. You get a code, you put it in a plugin, your Google Analytics is connected, and you start receiving the, your data. Uh, another much better integration is to Google Tag Manager. You need to integrate your code into Google Tag Manager and to integrate Google Tag Manager on your website. It's a bit more technical, so it's not covered into this presentation, but I recommend this, this method because once you integrate Google Tag Manager, you can integrate a lot of other stuff to it. So not just Google Analytics, but Facebook Pixel, custom tags, custom script, a lot of other stuff that you can do on your own. And it's super flexible. Uh, and now to the part of the backups. Most people just install Google Analytics. So one of the pro tips I would, I would say it's all we have a backup view. So the first view that's generated by default, once you just go into Google Analytics, if you go into admin, if you go into property, you will see that you can actually create multiple views. And for each view, you can have a filter or a condition under which the traffic is filtered out. Why do you need to have a backup view? Because if you set up your filter incorrectly any time in the future, you will lose all, the, all that data. So it pays out to have a filter that's not set up. And for the main view, I also recommend that you always filter out internal traffic because in a couple of ages that I've worked on, that, that hasn't been done properly. So if you have an agency, well, let's say 20 workers that are constantly on their website looking for offers, looking for content, doing something, that will inflate your website visits much and you will actually have a hard time differentiating what are the real users and what are your employees. And exclude all known bots, spiders, bots, you know, the Google is crawling your website for content each day. Uh, other crawlers are also out there and they're crawling your website and you can actually filter them out, your, out of your results so you don't have inflated figures. And also activate demographic and interest report. That will actually tell you that part I was talking about the users when you can actually see if they're male, if they're female, what their location and most importantly what, that interest is, what their interests are. So let's talk a little bit about navigating Google Analytics and I'm going to rush through this a little bit because you were more interested in more advanced stuff. But for just for those that are actually using them or starting using Google Analytics, this is some of the main things that you need to be aware of and understand. So first thing is the navigation. Navigation is on the left of your dashboard. This is how the dashboard looks when you join the main dashboard view, once you open your account, once you integrate Google Analytics on your website, once you go into your account, this is how it looks like. And these are the, uh, the five main categories that you can actually see on your left side. So it's real time, audience, acquisition, behaviors, and conversions. Um, there are some more important than others, and there's a lot of in there, but let me try just to cover the most important stuff. So the first thing most of the people see when they go into first report, and I believe that's an acquisition tab and an overview. So this is the sum of the first information that is shown. These are the visits. There's a nice pie chart, but these are the important things that you need to be aware of. So one of the most key elements that you, need, you, you will learn over time through Google Analytics, what are sessions, what are visitors, what is visitor ID, what is conversion, all the terminology can be learned through time, but for the beginning, for an average user that owns a blog, that has a content and post it for somebody else, I think it's super critical to understand which blog articles are performing better. On which articles the readers or visitors are actually staying on and which are just leaving from. So for, the, for all, all that information, you actually need to understand this. Users is a number of users that are actually visited your website in a specific time that you've chosen. Sessions, a number of sessions, the time, the time they came to your site. Session is not the same as a user. Page views, there are a no, uh, number of pages or viewed pages on your website. This is average pages per session, average session duration, bounce rate, and new sessions. New sessions is important if your goal of your website is to actually to attract new users. So that's super important for those. For those that are, let's say, software service, Maybe not as much because most of your audience will be people that come back to log into your service. Uh, bounce rate is one of the, let's say, important measures because it shows 
uh, the amount of users that came to your website and left immediately. So that happens most often when you have a campaign and your campaign, your ad, it's not in the sync with what the user expects. So he clicks the ad, comes to your website and navigates away from it immediately. Uh, word of warning, this is pretty high. And also if you see bounce rates that are really low, like 3%, 4%, 6%, most likely you didn't integrate with Google Analytics uh, properly. And I said that for the number of websites that are public website, that's pretty low figure. If you have an internal portal that people need to log on, then this will be super low. So the next one, date. Uh, if you're on a free version of Google Analytics, you can choose a date under which you will analyze everything. There are preset conditions like their day, seven days, but you can choose whatever you like. And why is this important? Because for Google Analytics, for free version, Google actually, after you select a large enough, a large enough time uh, in the past, so over 60 days or 90 days, they actually aggregate your figures. So you will not be shown actual results, but approximation of the results. Because for free accounts, they don't actually save everything, they save aggregate tables, so let's say it's a guesswork <laughs> based on the last, last uh, amount of data they have on your website. And now we can talk about understanding each of those, let's say, categories on the left. And the first one is audience, your customers. Like we said, we need to understand who our customers are. Where are they coming from, what are they using? And that's all of these, let's say, options once you go into audience. Of course, there isn't enough time to go everything and it will be not really relevant to every one of you. So I would like just to go over a couple of things that are important, both for the people that are new at this, both for people that they want some advanced integrations. So we just explained all the basic stuff. One of actually thing that would be super useful is to understand where your users are coming from, who are they? And the best results are actually shown once you start using these segments, custom segments. So let's say you own a niche shop or there is a blog on your site and you're also selling something. It doesn't make sense to look at your entire audience. It makes sense to look at the segment of your audience. And let's say those are people that actually purchased something. So let's, you just, if you're not paying attention to that and you just look at your, your entire audience, you'll see people across the board from 18 years to 55 years. But let's say you look at the people who shop on your website and you suddenly discover it's not just male and female, it's mainly female 35 to 45 years old. And your audience is not actually everybody but a specific segment. And you actually find that out if you look at your, if you segment the data you see on this screen, and you just look at the people that converted or bought something on your website. And you can actually find out about that specific audience, but then going into demographic and location report. There's a lot of information here, and there are actually some beta testing around lifetime value and cohort analysis. Cohort analysis is actually super useful. If, uh, does any of you have a software service? Nobody? How many of you are with the blog? And eShops, so a couple of people, yeah, about, about the same amount of audience. Um, so if you're an eShop, lifetime value is super important, but in order to have that, you need to have a conversion set up and actually value for conversion pumped back into Google Analytics. I'll talk about that in that advanced part. Uh, if you're, on the other hand, software as service cohort analysis is super, Super interesting because it shows how cohort specific people that join in specific time, are they declining? How are, are they leaving your service? And you can analyze each month or each week through this beta testing tool that's right now in, in the testing phase. Um, also, here is user explorer that you can actually explore each session for each users. This intersection is actually shown if you turn on that advanced uh, part I told in a first, in a third slide, I think about what you need to turn on once you integrate Google Analytics. Behavior, a little bit about them, what technology they're using, are they coming over which devices, desktop, laptop, mobile. Uh, and there are additional options that 
you need to have a little bit more technical background to go in and set up. You can actually set up your own custom fields that you want to track about them. And you can also use custom dimensions and additional stuff that you can also benchmark to this tool. But for the benchmarking, you would actually need to write your own JavaScript, JavaScript code in order to benchmark some sort of uh, part of your audience. And for the, for the acquisition, we don't have a picture. Um, similar dashboard look. These are the main thing that you need to be aware of the acquisition. Why is acquisition super important? How many of you have any sort of marketing campaigns or agencies or that you do them yourselves? Uh, I find that the agents after the, let's say, SEO part, some sort of advertising is key if you want to increase the view of your website. Simple SEO is not that efficient in the beginning, especially if your site is young. And for the either opening an e-shop or any sort of commercial, you'll need to have a marketing campaign. Uh, so this one, this report acquisition is super important for that. And you need to set up your channels right because uh, you need to group them in order to idolize them better. So uh, Google has its own default setup and it's mainly social, AdWords, referrals, paid. Uh, that was actually shown in a picture. <laughs> Uh, and you can actually deep dive deeper with source, source and medium and analyze it. You can also analyze it if you have AdWords. If you connected your Google account to Search Console, you can also see that. And why it's also important because you can analyze those campaigns, specifically each campaign. So if you are working with an agency, this would be a really good way to test are they doing the job. Why? Because I'm not sure what house here in Slovakia but we have a lot of digital agencies in Serbia. And basically they come to the small business owner and say, oh, I'm going to make you a great campaign. You're going to look good. You're going to be on Instagram. You're going to be on YouTube. Everybody will see you. Everybody will click on the ad. You will have thousands of people coming to your website. And then how you can actually test it. Well, the Google Analytics is a tool for this. You can actually see it through this. You can actually see you tag each campaign and you know exactly over which campaign, over each web website, over each mar marketing channel did your customer come to you. Uh, one of the actually really important things, um, Google has its own automatic tagging. So for most of their campaigns, you get automatic tags on which they actually can track over which channel person came. But it's a big recommendation that you use UTM coding for all of your web campaigns, both on Facebook, both on Google, both with banners. Um, so how many of you are actually using UTM codes? Few of you. Uh, I'm, then I'm pretty s uh, sorry that I didn't include the link. There's a UTM building tool uh, that actually builds uh, like a sentence that would go behind the URL of your landing page and you attach it to your campaign and then you can know exactly over which campaign, over which ad person came to your website and you can see that, analyze that in this acquisition part of the Google Analytics. So if you're not using it, uh, write it down or remember to look at the presentation later. Uh, UTM tagging is a must, I would say, for all marketing campaigns. Either if you do them yourself or if you're working with an external agency, request that they do this. It's two minutes of work and then you can track the results much more accurately than you, that you would do with the default installation. So there it was. And here is the analysis of the channels that are grouped by default. Paid search, organic search, direct, social, display, and referral. For those that you then don't know, paid search is usually paid campaigns. Organic search is usually that comes over Google, Bing, Yahoo, and similar search engines. Uh, direct is if somebody actually wrote down directly in the URL, your URL landed on your page. Social is, of course, Facebook, Twitter, and similar social platforms. And displays are banners, uh, videos, YouTubes, and other display forms of advertising. And referrals, if somebody is put the referral on their website and they're referring to you, most commonly used in blogs. And next category, behavior. Uh, this one is also actually super important, if you remember that slide with the questions in the beginning. It's not just important that we understand their audience and where, where they came from, but we need to understand what they're doing on our website. So what's the content they're consuming? 
is one writer that's writing on your blog better than the other one? Is one product more interesting to the specific segment of your users? So these are all the questions that you can answer through analyzing the behavior. Uh, you can actually see what pages your visitor visit, watch the average, average time on the page. And that's super useful to correct whatever mistakes you made on the website, to understand if there's something is broken, and to actually understand what's interesting to your users. I had a recent experience. Uh, a friend of mine asked me to check up their eShop. It was actually performing very poorly. Besides not having the Google Analytics integrated at all, <laughs> they also put a lot of money in marketing, thinking that users wanted one thing. Uh, it was a pet shop, so they kind of went all in. Cheap delivery, everything for your pets, you don't have to pay for the postage. People are really wasn't interested at all in that. They were actually interested in specific products. And for those specific products, you can actually find out which one were they. Once they put that into marketing, I think their sales went up around 300%. So that's one of the things that Google Analytics really shine on. It really actually helps you to improve your website. So one of the things I would mention here, you can analyze site content, specific pages, type of pages, you can group them, you can filter them. You can analyze your landing pages, uh, the pages where the, uh, people most usually land when they come to your website. Uh, one of the things that we talked about is just part site working properly. There's a site speed where it, uh, you can actually be warned. Site search. And one of the key things that you need to integrate into Google Analytics if you aren't, those are events. Uh, events are not exactly conversions, so they don't actually bring any value. But you might want, for instance, to track how many people came to a specific page, how many people clicked on a specific pop-up, how many people applied for a newsletter. That's one of the key things I would actually track. Uh, how many people downloaded a specific PDF file? All the things you can actually track with a specific event. And there's a lot of events you can actually customize and then track with this tool. And let's talk about conversions. So what are conversions? Uh, most of the people that integrate Google Analytics forget about this step. It's that part about measuring success. Measuring if what you're doing actually, in the end, comes with something that's useful to your user and to you. Did they purchase something? Did they apply it to your program? Did they download a specific video? Are they interested in what you're offering to them? And you can set up a lot of conversions that are tracked by goals. You can have a lot of goals. Of course, for the better analysis, you really should keep that number small. So you set up as a goal, let's say, a purchase on your website. And you can set a purchase path. You can set up as a goal number of purpose but number of people that apply for a newsletter. You can set up as a, goal visit, as a goal visiting a specific page. Why is this super important? Because in the end, it's not about having a pretty fast site. It's about that site actually delivering what you actually intend with it. New users, new products, sales, contacts, working with people, and you can track this as a value to you through conversions. Uh, once you set them up, two things are very useful, and I recommend uh, you either find on the internet, or I'll show you later links where you can actually learn more about this specific part. Uh, it's funnel and e-commerce. E-commerce has its own setup. It's a bit more trickier than just entering goals. And the second thing is funnel. I think my colleague previously talked about the importance of funnel and how the, with each step you have fewer customers. Uh, so that's also super important here. You can actually use it to integrate steps in, let's your, say, checkout process. Why is this important? Quite often, people set up an e-shop, they set up a shopping process, order process, payment process. Sometime in the future, something breaks. And you're just seeing a drop, let's say, in numbers of orders, you're not sure why. If you have this funnel set up, you can actually see in which step of your process the users are dropping. Are they finding it hard to work with? Uh, is there a problem? Most cases we found out that it's a problem with the browser. Browser doesn't support some of the functionality or stops supporting functionality. 
let's say one of the major them, things in that regard were Chrome stopping to support Adobe Flash and using its own built-in Flash player. A lot of functionality that was tied up to Adobe Flash player simply stopped working. And for all the persons that were specifically using their websites through Chrome, the functionality didn't work. For those working other browsers that didn't filter out Adobe Flash, they simply continue working. So setting up a funnel where you can see how your customers are shorting out, you can actually quickly understand what the problem is with your conversion process. And this is some of the advanced stuff that I wanted to mention. I'm going to walk through this quickly and then I'm going to ask you if you had any questions because you said you were interested mostly in advanced stuff and I really want to answer your questions. So at least point you in the right direction that actually, actually help you. The power of views, I actually told you about them. Uh, you can have a lot of views, but like I said, you need a raw one where you can track all the data. You have the main out where you filter out internal traffic, bots and other stuff that actually interfere with your results. And you can have additional views. Test you, you can test new filters. One of the views that I would recommend every, every each one of you to use is mobile view. Have a separate view for analyzing the users that are coming over mobile. You can use the main view to see the difference between desktop and mobile users. But as we're going, as we went over the threshold where there is much more mobile users than desktop users, it pays out to analyze the mobile users as a separate segment. Then, like I said, for each of those analyses, when you choose the date, you can actually choose a specific segment of users. So don't just look at your entire audience. Look at the people who bounce from your website. Look at the people who purchase something on your website. Look at the male category, female category. Look at the people who uh, were on your site the longest. Look at the people who were at your site the shortest. Don't just analyze everybody. Try to segment the users. The more you segment them, the more you will understand specific audience better. Again, uh, example with the web shop. Once a friend of mine actually had the segments in, she understood what products are dog owners buying, what products are cat owners buying. And in 90%, what she thought they needed, it's not what was sale, sold. Once she understood what each of the customer segment wanted, they promoted those specific products. And again, 300 on marketing increase and 200 more on the actual sales. They practically, they had five times more revenue than before. You can then analyze it by behavior, by the results, and by specific sequences. You can actually track specific users that came over a specific path or did specific actions the websites or a bit advanced stuff, so I'm not going to cover it into this. One of the pretty cool stuff is you can make your own custom reports. So instead of going through all of this and wasting, let's say, 40 minutes of your time, <laughs> more or less, you can create a report that you will need. So not all of this is relevant to you. You can maybe just look at the views or maybe just at the conversions or maybe you're just interested in a specific segment or specific location. Uh, as I've seen today in this WordCamp, most of the people and speakers were here were Slovakian. So it makes perfect sense for you guys to actually limit your views or Google Analytics just to Slovakian market. Or we can segment it per big cities in Slovakia. Uh, and you can create a special report that just deals with the internal traffic, internal customers, and maybe international customers. And then create a special report <coughs> that you can just view in one page everything that it interests you. That's also custom dashboard. You can create a dashboard. You don't have to rely on these ones. You can have a custom dashboard. One thing that probably will, will be super important and super useful to you who are in marketing agencies or who provide these reports to your clients. You can actually send these custom reports to them on a regular basis and you can actually give them the access to the custom dashboard. So instead, explaining to your clients they need to know everything that we just went through. You can just show them, hey, you had this many visitors this month, this many visitors purchased something from this location, these were the best, best products and the products that were sold mostly, end of the report. 
and they understand everything perfectly. You don't need to waste your time calling, explaining something is different. Custom, custom alerts are also very useful. It can actually show you if there is a problem with your campaign, if you ran out of the budget, if for some reason the number of visitors of conversion have dropped suddenly. So I would actually, as one of the advanced stuff, I would actually recommend of all of you to use these custom alerts to alert you, let's say, your website visits have dropped to zero. Hmm, probably website is not working and then we can go to <laughs> understanding if you have a white screen of that or something similar. And like I said, e-commerce tracking and data. This will be super useful for all of you that plan of releasing an e-commerce shop or do have an e-commerce shop. Uh, does any one of you use e-commerce tracking to Google Analytics? Okay, so some of you actually battle with the data layer, I suppose. Uh, that is one of the super cool things about Google Analytics and one of mostly unknown to most of people. You don't need to rely on just the data that's been taken on the website. You can actually set additional data Google Analytics. So for instance, somebody purchases some, something on your website, you, just, you don't need to just send him the conversion. You can actually send him the value, the name of the product, the quantity of the product, and all of that data is then available in Google Analytics. So you can see exactly how much you earn to each product. And that's also it's super useful. It doesn't, for if you're running an e-commerce shop, it makes sense not just to know how many items you sold, but what was actually the number that you earned in the end. So let me just do one slide recap. This is one slide that's actually put everything together. So if you want to take out something out of this presentation, both for the beginners, both for the advanced ones, these are the things that kind of put everything in one place. Again, you will have that presentation on my Twitter account. You can download it. You can save this slide if you need it. But it shows for each of those categories what would be the most important stuff that you need to take care of. And I would recommend everybody from the beginners to advanced one that you need to have this integrated. And this is all of the things that we can track to Google Analytics. We really cannot track TV views through Analytics at this moment. So, by asking these questions that we mentioned in the beginning, who is your audience, where are they coming from, what are they doing on the websites, and what are the results. We are actually understanding our customers better, understanding what they are doing on our website, and the final and the biggest question, do I actually see some results that are favorable to me as a business? And the goal is not to look at the stats, not to look at the graphs, not to bury yourself in the data. The goal of all of this data, or Google Analytics, is to improve your website. And why is that important? You have a measurement plan that you can track through Google Analytics and other analytics method. Google Analytics is not the only solution that can help you improve your website. Understand your customers. Like I said, 90% of the case, what we presume is not shown to actual results. Constantly improve. So constantly upgrade your website, your approach, your product line, your content, and test everything. You can actually test with Google Analytics two different versions of a web page, two different versions of the article. So use this tool that's also free to your advantage. And then you will be set up for success. So the goal of Google Analytics is not just to look at the charts and numbers, but to help every and each one of you to understand your audience and your website better, to improve them, and to see something in return. And for the end, I prepared a few links if you want to learn more. There is an analytics academy, everything from the beginning to the more advanced stuff, absolutely everything that's currently in the Google Analytics is available through the analytics academy. There are courses, there are video courses, there are scriptures, there are lectures, everything you need and want to know, everything that we touched in this presentation, a lot more information can be found on the Analytics Academy. 
you can, if you prefer, you can actually just go to YouTube and watch all these videos. Videos are pretty understandable. And if you want some advanced stuff, some integration between Google Analytics and another software, if you're, for instance, exporting the data to some database or Google Data Studio, you can actually contact their support and then there is a forum that you can actually ask questions about the advanced stuff and somebody will probably jump in to either point you to the article that has the answer or to answer them themselves. And these are some of the tools that work really well. For instance, if you're using Google Analytics, it probably makes sense if you often use it to have an analytics app on your phone. So you can be alerted, you can check at any time the client calls, what are the results of the website, what are the main figures, what happened, how many sales did you have, how many visits did you have. It's super helpful to have it on your phone. Google Tag Managers and as a way of integrating different analytics and conversion tags. Tag Assistant to actually check if your analytics tags are working on your website. Attribution Modeling. Data Studio is a super cool tool. I cannot go into this uh, because it's a bit complicated and it deals much more with uh, statistics and reporting, but you can use all this data from Google Analytics to push into Data Studio and to create any report that you would like. So you're not limited to views and metrics on this solution, but you can create your own basically. And now it's time for questions. <laughs> please, in Slovakia and English, any. Please, can you deliver the mic to the... <laughs> Very interesting question. Well, uh, nothing will happen to the analytics. Uh, what will happen is the website's owner are required to announce to their users they are being tracked with analytics and to ask them if they accept or not to be tracked through Google Analytics, which, by the way, was actually mandatory quite a while ago, but generally the people were kind of dodging that part. If you have actually looked at the many websites in the European Union for the last couple of years, you would probably see a banner that says, hey, you're tracked to Google Analytics. What's now coming with the GDPR is there is a mandatory choice for each user to choose if they want to be, and they need to be asked. It's not enough just to tell them you're being tracked. You need to offer them a way to opt out. You need to ask them if they accept, and only if they accept, you can actually track them to Google Analytics. So I would say it's a much more bigger headache for website owners and analytics guys than for the user itself. Any other questions? Please. Okay, thank you. Uh, just two questions. The, the first one is, uh, maybe what KPIs do, uh, are you using uh, when measuring or in optimizing your website, CodeDaddy? And the second question, uh, I'm just curious whether you use uh, last click attribution model or some other model and why? Thank you. You're most welcome. Uh, first part first part is a bit trickier. We have 13 analytics teams that range from four to 13 persons and each one is divided for a specific product because Google, um, GoDaddy is a really big company, over 10,000 employees seven centers around the world uh, because of the size of the company and because we're not just tracking the website. Internal portals, employees, C3 teams, telephone calling, uh, we have a dedicated analytics team for each product. Uh, so the KPIs vary by product and by landing pages and we constantly test almost every landing page that we released is a test at least in two variants. Uh, the KPIs are of course number of orders people on website, uh, value, and each that is actually trickled back to the page. Uh, to the second part of your question, because based on your <laughs> question, I understand that you understand the limitations of Google Analytics. It's not the perfect solution, so we use actually two different solutions uh, that track not just the last quick click model, but they have their own internal system that we can actually track the users not just through analytic Google Analytics cookie but through other platforms so we kind of integrate we can integrate much more wide range we can actually track TV <laughs> we can actually track calls uh, we using an external company that has specified software to actually have a multi-touch conversion model 
and each value, each uh, sale, each product, each view is actually distributed by algorithm through all the touch points. And it, it really works well, m much better than the simple Google Analytics uh, integration. Ešte tu máme nejaké otázky? Is there anything that I can help answering you with? Did you have any question about your Google Analytics or something that you want to see solved for your website? Hi. Uh, is there any plugin which uh, integrate Google Analytics into Google Tag Manager through GDPR problem? Like if it is true or false from the website? Like uh, for not anything that's working properly at this moment and that yeah, I'm aware yeah, of. Uh, they are working and almost all the major companies are preparing for G GDPR, but I don't know if anything, anybody had actually created a solution, put it on the market for everybody else. I know they have a working versions for themselves, I can tell you that, but not, plug not one plugin at the moment actually solves the GDPR for the website owners. So you have to approach it manually to look at what GPR actually requires of the website users, what you need to inform your users, what rights do they have on your website, and have sort of manual solution for that. Ask their consent, don't email everybody, uh, inform them about their rights, that they can be erased from your system, ask their consent before sending them. Uh, best advice that I can actually give to every one of you, have a double opt-in for email, That's way, that way you'll be covered. So everybody that are currently on your email list, my recommendation is actually send them an email, say, are you consent on emailing you on this, this, and this subject? And then just continue email them because you have consent and remove the ones that you don't. <laughs>